Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, we're going to be pouring a basement floor. And like the thumbnail said, how can I pour concrete at such a high slump? Now we had this concrete tested here today and it was an 8 slump. So how are we doing that? Well, we're using a high range water reducer. And for those of you guys that don't know what that is, it's a chemical you add when they batch the concrete truck out that allows you to pour a higher slump concrete like this and not affect the strength at all. Now the one we use, it's called Adva 190. It comes from Grace Products. And right there you can see it produces highly efficient, high slump concrete with, with hardly using much dosage at all. They use about 15 ounces per yard. And it, it produces concrete with extremely workable characteristics referred to as a high slump. It also allows concrete to be produced with very low water cement ratios for high strength. So, I mean, for those of you guys in the comments on some of my previous videos that say my concrete's junk, how can I pour so wet? This is why, guys. I mean, come on. I've been doing this my whole life. You really think I'm going to pour wet concrete? That's going to be junk. I mean, I do it for a living. So, this is what we use, Adva 190. This, this is what allows us to pour really loose concrete, seven or eight inch slump, and pour every day with it. I mean, that's what we do, we pour every day. Why would we want to kill ourselves pouring low slump, very dry concrete, when we can pour this, come out with actually probably a better product, and it's really more finishable too. It finishes, this stuff finishes really, really easy. So. For those of you guys wondering just what we're using, that's what we're using. I'm sure that you guys that pour a lot like we do, if, if you don't use a water reducer, you can ask your batchman if they've got it. They probably do. Where you In a 10-yard load, you're using a little bit more than a gallon of water reducer. So, you know, maybe like 150 ounces. It's really not that expensive for how much more easy it makes the concrete work. Uh, pulling it around, screeding it, bow floating it, everything. It just makes the day go a lot easier. So this is what we're doing today. We got about a 1600 square foot floor. This is a pretty typical day for us. You know, we'll do a, a house floor like this. I'll leave Darren and Luke on it to finish. You know, me and Tia will go get some other stuff ready or we'll go pour something smaller and get that finished. And uh, we usually do, you know, two or three things a day. And that's that's what this one of the things this water reducer allows us to do. It just you know leave. I can leave two guys on this now. That wall that's in the sun there on the right is going to dry really really fast today, and then the one on the left that's going to be in the shade for quite a bit is going to dry slow. So it's going to be kind of like finishing two different floors in one. And the, the part of the floor that's in the sun, and then the part of the floor that's in the shade. So, you, I mean, you really need to know what you're doing when you're finishing floors like this. You can really mess something up by thinking the part in the shade is ready when it's really not. Uh, Darren and Luke are really good at finishing stuff like this. So it, it just makes, it makes our jobs go a lot easier because those guys really know what they're doing. We're going to use the power screed today from uh, MBW Incorporated, the battery powered one too. So I got... I got a 5 amp Milwaukee battery in that and it only showing two bars out of the four when we started. And that one battery, it did this whole floor um, with plenty of power. So if that tells you anything, there's a, you know, if you want to check that out, there's a link for that down in the description and you can check that out. We, we use that on most of our floors. I also have their gas powered one. Their gas powered one is really, really good too. So either one, I mean, you can't really go wrong with either one. If you're doing mostly residential stuff like we do, then definitely the battery powered one is probably all you need. If you're doing some bigger commercial stuff, then maybe you just want to get the gas powered one. I think the gas powered one probably has a little bit more vibration to it. It might go just a little bit faster, but this is more than enough for residential stuff right here. You can see that gets it pretty flat, especially with two really good rakers like that. It makes uh, screeding pretty easy. Look how flowable that concrete is. It just, I mean, it, it literally just flows into place. It's, it's not what I would call self-leveling. I mean, you've got to move it around. But 
to pour, be able to pour a seven or eight inch slump. Um, we're going to get this floor in twice as fast as if we were trying to pour like a five. And barely even really break a sweat getting it in. So definitely worth the few extra bucks per yard that you got to pay for the water reducer. We have to pour over the wall a lot like this too. Let me know down in the comments, you guys. You, you know, probably most of you in the south, in the west, you don't have to pour over the wall in a foundation like this. Let me know if you do. I know probably most people in the north here, in northeast, in, in the mid part of the U.S. probably have to pour in foundations where we have a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. Our frost goes down about four feet. So... We're really either pouring inside a frost wall, what we call a frost wall, or a full eight foot wall like this for a basement. I'm shooting a wet pad now. That's what we use to screed off from in the middle. So I got the laser. I got a Topcon RL H5B self leveling laser set up. Um, we use that every single day and then I'm shooting my wet pads. So we're gonna screed off those. You'll see how we do that here in a second. I put out a couple videos a week guys if you're new to my channel if this is your first video you're watching uh, my channel's all about concrete stuff so if you like that kind of stuff go ahead down there and hit subscribe if you guys like these videos you know please go ahead and smash that like button let's see if we can get a thousand likes on this video now I gotta make those wet pads close enough so we can use the power screed the, the, the board on the screed is 12 feet so we make them close enough so we can reach all the wet pads with the power screed. Darren, he hooked a, what we call our boot on the end of the chute. So it's kind of like using a conveyor boot almost. It just drops the concrete right into where we need it. Now Luke and Darren are screeding the, the, the wet pad. That's right level with the outside pads that we mag up against the wall. We got a chalk line snapped up against the wall that we shot earlier and then we just snapped it so we mag our outside pads to the chalk line and then we shoot our inside pads with the laser what's good about a power screed like that too is pretty much anybody can run it the running the screed is actually the easy part it's the two guys raking that really have the the important part of keeping that concrete where it needs to be that's gonna that's what's gonna make the, the screed run flat I got a couple floors where Tia actually did all the power screeding so if you want to check them out you can look at some of the concrete floors in the playlist There you can see how those guys are keeping the concrete. I like it about between a half inch and an inch high behind that screen as I'm pulling it back. No higher than an inch. Any higher than that, then sometimes if you're going too fast, it may want to vibrate right under the screen. And you definitely don't want to make it low. So those guys actually work pretty fast and hard keeping it just a little bit high behind me. That's what makes it the easiest. And it does kind of float on the surface. It doesn't really want to sink into the concrete. As long as you're moving it slowly, it's it's not going to sink. You can see how it sets right on there. It's probably about, I never weighed it, but it feels like it might be 30 pounds, 35 pounds, something like that. It's not really that heavy. So the second truck's just back in. He's just checking his slump. Best way to check it is really just dump some on the ground, <laughs> see what it feels like, and then if you need to have him add five or ten gallons, then he adds it. Yeah, that foundation is about 30 feet wide, so we couldn't really screed it in just two passes. We had to make that third pass. We only do flat work. We don't do the foundation work. So I'm working for the foundation guy here. Now the foundation guy is working for the builder who's the general contractor. So 
when they when they do the estimating you know when they price this out they price out all the details I I don't get into the details when I'm working for these guys they just hired me to pour and finish so on the details on this one were you know 3500 psi concrete fiber mesh in it six mil poly vapor barrier and then we just pour finish and saw our expansion joint so all we really had to do on this is put the vapor barrier down and then when I order the concrete I order it with a fiber mesh and that's basically it and a lot of our floors are like that if you've seen any of my previous videos you know a lot of them are specked out at 6 mil vapor barrier fiber mesh either 3000 psi concrete or 3500 for floors like this we use 4000 psi concrete on all of our exterior stuff but that's the basic spec. There's not a lot spec'd out up here with wire mesh uh, and rebar and just simple floors like this. I mean, as long as the sub base is compacted the way it should be, good gravel or crushed rock, compacted in six inch lifts, um, the floor is not going to settle. And then it's not going to heave because it's heated. And the floor's not going to go anywhere. Even if it did crack, I mean, where would it go? It's locked in by the foundation. So the saw cuts take care of almost all the shrinkage cracking usually. So we saw cut quite a few joints in this after we get done power troweling it. And the fiber mesh does help hold everything together. It helps reduce some of the, the shrinkage cracking by having the fiber mesh in there. So, I mean wire mesh mostly ends up on the bottom anyway no matter what you do even if you put slab bolsters under it most of it's going to be towards the bottom so most of the floors up here are specced out like this by either an architect or an engineer nothing has nothing to do with what we do see how that boot that boot makes it pretty easy for moving the concrete around it gets it pretty much right where we need it and then that means just one guy behind the boot just kind of knocking things down, getting it somewhat level. And I can mag my edges, I can get my wet pad shot, Tia can mag edges, she can bow float. So it makes it pretty easy using a boot like that. It's actually called a tremmy, but we, we just call it the boot. And yeah, you can see my laser over there now. That's probably the best laser that I've ever had. I've had, I think I've had four or five of them in 40 years. But this one here is is really, really nice. It's really accurate, really easy to set up. Uh, I got a link for that down in the description too. We use that for everything, setting slabs, uh, pool decks, patios, walkways, floors like this, just anything. We can do slopes on with it in garages. You know, basically, the way we do slopes is we just move the receiver on the grade stick up or down. The uh, the laser doesn't change, but that really is one easy laser to use. Now you can see how when your slump is pretty decent to work with, two guys can use a 14 foot rod and they can get wet pads all struck by themselves without even anybody raking. And then, you know, I was over there finishing magging the edges. And now we'll get everything ready for the, the power screen. Well, this was 21 yards total. That's a pretty, that's, I'd say up here, that's about an average, maybe a, a little bit more than average size basement. We seem to be doing quite a few big houses these last couple years. What about you guys? Let me know down in the comments. Do you, you feel like you're pouring bigger than average houses more than normal? It seems like we are. I don't know why, but the typical, you know, the typical 40 by 30 or 28 by 40 house, we don't see too many of those anymore. Yeah, using that using that MBW screed demon with two guys raking is really fast. With one guy raking, you know he's got to go from one side to the other. It still it still works good, but you just maybe your pace you got to slow your pace down just a little bit. He is on the bull float. 
this is her third year doing concrete so she really she pretty much knows what she's doing she can think ahead too now so you know she'll have things ready or have things done in advance of us you know depending on what we're doing so that that makes that makes working with someone a lot easier And see, she already knows she needs a third handle there. So instead of me having to tell her to go get a third handle for that bull float, she's on it. That's a good shot of just how smooth that Scree Demon runs. You can see the end here on the right. It's you're just leaving that little mark. That's what you. That's what you're shooting for to know everything's level. If that thing rides high or if it digs in too much, then you know you got a, a spot you got to go back and touch up. So like I said, I'm on that 5 amp battery. That's really not that big of a battery for something like that. And it only had two lights out of the four lit. So we was wondering if it was going to make it through the whole floor or not. So, so far so good. It has its own little light too, so if you're pouring in a basement where the house is decked over, it just makes things a little easier to see. That's a pretty good shot of how high I like that concrete behind the, the screen. You can see it's just a little bit high. Luke's making sure he's pushing enough up there for me. That way there's no stopping. The guy pulling it backwards, which is me right here, just you just want steady throttle and a steady movement backwards. That's where you're gonna get your floors the flattest. Yeah, you can see how easy that is. I mean it took less than a minute probably to screed that bay right there. You can see we got a garage up back there too. We're not going to do in the garage today. I got, had some other things I had to do. There's actually two garages on this job. There's that one that's connected. Then there's another one that's detached. That we'll be doing the, the very next day. You see Tia on the bull float. She's pretty fast on the bull float now. That, that you know, just having her being able to do that takes takes uh, a lot of workload off of our shoulders not having to worry about that part so we're getting down towards the end now if you guys want to learn how to do stuff like us you know I got the concrete underground that's down in the, the show more or the description down below or just a little down arrow if you're on your uh, if you're on a cell phone that's my private training area and I get all kinds of trainings in there that teaches you how to do concrete like we do. Stamp concrete, you know, walkways, patios, pool decks, driveways, epoxy floors, repair, all kinds of stuff in there that I teach. So if you're looking to learn how to do stuff with concrete just like we do, then that's probably the one you're going to want to join right there is the concrete underground. Now we'll leave, there's a little bulkhead there to the right that you can't really see, almost like right in front of Tia. We'll, uh, we'll pour this all out, we'll leave that a little empty, just in case we're high, we can pull the high right into that bulkhead. And then, if we're not high, we can just back the truck up and get a little bit more concrete out of that boot. The bulkhead is actually, we call it a bulkhead, I don't know, what do you guys call it, but it's outside the house. I guess some people call it a dog house. And that's just the way to access this basement from outside the house. Well, you can see Luke's, Luke's uh, breaking a little bit of a sweat there. It is actually in the sun. It's really, really hot down in this basement. There's probably between that wall and the sun and then the wall and the shade over there to the right, there's probably like 20 degrees difference. That's how, that's how much that sun radiates off that foundation wall.
again, we're using high range water reducer. Adva 190 is what we use. And it allows us to pour a seven or an eight inch slump based on how many ounces they put in per yard. You can use it for a mid range, which would get you up to about a six inch slump. Or like a, between a mid and a high, which is actually what we're doing, which gets you a seven or eight slump. Or you can even put more in and get the concrete looser if you wanted to. And it doesn't affect strength. It, it, you still have a low water cement ratio, so it doesn't add to cracking or anything like that. It actually adds to a really highly, highly strengthened concrete. Because we're not really adding water to get it to slump. So again guys, if, if you're new to the channel, you haven't subscribed yet, please go down there and hit subscribe now. And we'll see you on the next one.